Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Huck. Today I'm doing my June wrap up and like most of my videos right now, this one's coming a little bit late. Um, June was kind of a rough month for me. I had some health stuff going on that was not fun. I had to go to a bunch of different doctors, had to get different tests and stuff, and I'm pretty much fine, so don't worry about me. But it just made the whole month of June like very stressful and exhausting, and so that's why you know, I think I posted one video for the entire month of June, which I'm totally fine with because, you know, life happens. Sometimes I don't get to post as frequently. Um, but that's just why I haven't been as active on YouTube or other social media. Um, but I did get some reading done in June. Most of what I read was audiobooks because I just didn't feel like I could focus on physically reading books. Um, and then also a lot of what I read in June was uh, like contemporary, especially contemporary romances, and some nonfiction. I think I only finished one fantasy book the entire month, um, just because I just didn't feel like I had the mental bandwidth at the time to focus on something like fantasy that involves world building and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so my reading in June was very different, but I still read some books that I really enjoyed. So let's get started. So the first book that I finished in June was the one fantasy book that I read that month, which was City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. This is the first book in the Devabod series, uh, which is an adult high fantasy series that um, part of the book is set in like ancient Cairo and part of it is set in a magical city called Devabod. We're following two main perspectives. One is Nari, who wants to learn to become a doctor, but at the moment she is more of a con artist and she accidentally, but she does have some magical powers, and so she accidentally summons a deva named Dara who recognizes her magical powers and decides to bring her back to the magical city Devabad. The other main perspective that we're following is Ali, who is a prince in Devabad, um, and so we're getting to see this magical city from two perspectives, one of somebody who has lived there their whole lives and he is a prince, so he is very aware of like the politics and social structure of the this city. Um, and then the other is Nari, who is brand new to this magical world and is really discovering it as the reader is discovering it as well. And I really enjoyed this. I didn't really know what to expect going into it because this is one of those city or one of those books that's been on my TBR, I feel like, for so long that. I just knew I wanted to read it, but I had forgotten what it was about. I thought that the politics of this world were interesting and I'm interested to see where that goes and how it expands in future books. I liked our two main perspectives in this um, and I liked their dynamic. Um, so I'm interested to see how their dynamic kind of develops over time. I have kind of a sneaking suspicion that it might become romantic but I really hope it doesn't. There was also a romance in this book that I just wasn't that invested in. I don't know if it's going to be developed further in future books and maybe I'll become more invested, but in this one the romance that was kind of happening was one of the least interesting parts of the book to me. Um, but also this book has a healing character, like a healer character and healing magic, which when I found that out, I was like, how did I miss this? That this book has a character who wants to learn to be a doctor, but also has healing magic. Did no one tell me this or did I just completely miss this fact? Because we all know that I love a healer character. Um, and so I really enjoyed that. I do kind of wish that there had been more about like her healing magic or more about learning, you know, to be a doctor or a healer but I'm also hoping that that will be, you know, expanded upon or we'll get more time with that in future books. So I really enjoyed this and I gave this four stars. The next book that I completed was White Fragility, Why It's So Hard for White People to Talk About Racism by Robin DiAngelo. This is a nonfiction book about racism that I was reading as part of the Blackout Buddy Read. So this is a book whose intended audience is very much white people. Um, so it is written by a white woman talking to other white people, trying to get them to acknowledge their own whiteness and the role that their whiteness plays in white supremacy, in racism, and just the way that white people move through the world. Um, and so this is very much a introduction to these topics. There were definitely some parts of this that I thought were 
thought-provoking. One of the things that I thought was interesting that she brought up was this false dichotomy that white people have created in the way that we talk about racism. That there are good people and there are racist people and only bad people can be racist. And what that does is that it prevents us from being able to acknowledge and address the racism within ourselves and really prevents us from being able to talk about racism and address it and do the work that is necessary to address racism in ourselves and in this society that we are a part of. I have also seen some criticism of this book saying that this book isn't really about anti-racism, it is really about whiteness. If I can find the post again where I saw someone talking about this, I will link it below because I'm sure they will explain it way better than I am. Um, but yeah, so I did personally get something out of reading this book, but I also think there are valid criticisms of it. The next book that I read was Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert, and this is an adult contemporary romance. Contemporary romance is not like usually my genre, but I really wanted something that was just gonna be really fun and easy to read and could just be, you know, pure enjoyment, and I feel like that is what a contemporary romance is to me and I have seen a lot of people talking about and loving this book so I decided to pick it up as an audiobook and I'm so glad that I did because it was so much fun. This was my favorite book that I read this month. So in this book our main character is Chloe Brown and Chloe Brown has a chronic illness which I believe is fibromyalgia and so she deals with chronic pain and um fatigue and brain fog among other things and one day she has a near-death experience which is not related to her chronic illness um, but when she has this near-death experience her life flashes before her eyes and she decides that she thinks her life has been kind of boring and she hasn't been living it um, as fully as she wants to and so she makes a list of to-dos that she can check off um, to help her get a life. Some of them include doing something bad, riding a motorcycle, and and one of them is also to move out of her family home and get her own place. So that's one of the first things that she does is she moves out, gets her own apartment. And then of course the superintendent of her apartment happens to be this hot artist guy named Red who is recovering from an abusive relationship. And the two of them don't really get along at first, but Chloe thinks that Red would be the perfect person to help her check off a couple of the things from her to-do list um, or from her get a life list. And so she enlists him to help her check things off and then of course the two of them fall for each other. And this book is so cute. I loved both of the main characters in this and I think what I loved most about them was that they both seemed like really genuine, reasonable people. They just seemed like people who were trying to do their best. They were trying to be their best selves, they were trying to treat the people around them well, they were trying to work on their own stuff, they weren't creating a lot of like unreasonable excess drama and yet there was still obviously plot and drama to it because people's lives, even when they're not trying to create drama, people's lives are dramatic enough. And so I just really appreciated that about them, that they just seemed like really genuine people who were really trying their best. Um, and I think that that also made the point in the story, like most romances have a kind of conflict towards the end, it just made that conflict feel more realistic and feel more like it made sense for the characters. I really liked that both of these characters also really took care of each other in different ways and not in ways that were overbearing or like made things weird but just that they are caring people who try to support and care for each other. So really I just enjoyed both of these main characters so much. Red also is like such a cinnamon roll and I love cinnamon roll characters. That's the best kind of love interest I think so I loved him um, and I loved them together and it was just so cute like it was just like heart burstingly cute get that like feeling in your chest I loved this book. I gave it five stars. So after finishing Get a Life Chloe Brown, I wanted to read something similar to it. So I found another Talia Hibbert book, which was A Girl Like Her. Um, and this again is of course following two main characters, Ruth and Evan. This takes place in a small town and Ruth has lived in this small town her whole life, but she's been like socially ostracized in this town. And over the course of the book, we kind of find out what happened and the history of that. Uh, but because of that, she mostly keeps to herself. 
Um, and then our other main character is Evan, who is new to town. He, I believe, is ex-military, and he's a blacksmith, and he just came to town um, for a blacksmithing job. The two of them, of course, happen to be neighbors, and they and Evan wants to get to know uh, Ruth, even though she is kind of standoffish and keeps to herself. But the two of them get to know each other and have a romance, and this was also very cute. I really enjoyed this one. I don't have quite as much to say about this one. I think that I can't help but compare it to Get a Life Chloe Brown because I read them so back to back, but I also think there are a lot of similarities between the two of them, and while I did enjoy um, A Girl Like Her a lot, it definitely like paled in comparison to Get a Life Chloe Brown, uh, so if I hadn't read them so back to back I may have enjoyed it even more, but I did have a really fun time reading a girl like her, I gave it four stars. So it is starting to storm right now. There was thunder, so I don't know if you can hear that or not. Hopefully it's not distracting in the background, and also hopefully my power doesn't go out. The next book that I read was Felix Ever After by Casey Callender. This is a YA contemporary that is following our main character, Felix, um, and Felix wants to fall in love, but he is afraid that he may be one marginalization too many because he is black, he is trans, he's queer. In addition to that, Felix is living in New York City and he is in a summer art program uh, where he is working on developing a portfolio to apply to art school and hopefully get a scholarship. While he is in this art program though, someone from that school posts pictures of him before he transitioned uh, in a gallery in the school and posts his dead name. Um, and while people in the school had, pretty much everyone had known that he was trans, no one had seen those pictures of him from before he had transitioned and no one had previously known his dead name. And because of this, Felix now wants to get his revenge. He thinks he knows who did this, and so he starts catfishing somebody in his school. And so that is really what sets the plot off. Um, and I really enjoyed this. This is another one that I picked up just because I was in the mood for a contemporary, and I had seen so many people talking about this and raving about it, and it has such a beautiful cover. Um, and I'm really glad that I read it because I really enjoyed this one also. Um, I really loved the friendships in this book, especially the friendship between Felix and Ezra. I really appreciated that I felt like there was a lot of like good communication in general in this book. Like it wasn't always perfect, of course there's always some miscommunication, but overall I felt like there was a lot of really great clear communication between characters, which I really appreciated. But the thing that I loved the most about this is that a lot of the focus of this story is about like internal exploration, is about Felix's journey, learning more about himself, learning more about his identity, learning more about his relationships to family and friends and romantic relationships, and learning about his relationship to himself and learning to love himself. And I love books <laughs> that are about like internal journeys and internal development for characters. And that was such a large part of this story, so I really loved seeing the growth that he went through, the struggles that he had. And there are a lot of themes in this about identity and especially gender identity and self-love among other things. Um, and actually I'm gonna link a video below by Perpetual Pages because they recently did a really great uh, review of this where they talked about some of the larger themes in this book, so I would definitely recommend watching that. Uh, but I really enjoyed this, I really loved the journey that we got to go on with Felix, and I gave this one four stars. Next I read another romance, which was Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This is a new adult romance that takes place in kind of an alternate present day in which we are following the first son of the United States and his romance with a prince in England. At the beginning of the story, the two of them don't like each other, but for publicity reasons they have to pretend to be friends, and then their friendship develops into a romantic relationship. Um, and this is one that I have heard so many people just raving about, and I enjoyed it, but not as much as I was expecting to. I feel like maybe I went in with overly high expectations just because like, there's so much hype around this book. But also I think that for me, just the kind of arc of the romance in this wasn't my favorite because 
I my favorite part of a romance is usually the like build up the will they won't they part and this definitely had that but it was a lot shorter than I would have liked um, and then there was a point where they get together and then they're kind of hiding their relationship for a period of time and I did like the two of them together I enjoyed their romance but I just really wanted more of that like build up and will they won't they and like that whole part that's really what I read a romance for um, so the balance of that just like wasn't quite there for me. Also one of the things that just like bothered me throughout this is that there is as I said a period of time where they have to hide their relationship and yet like they have sex in public places pretty frequently and I'm like one this is not a good strategy for hiding your relationship and two you're stressing me out like this book was actually very stressful to me which is the opposite reason for me at that time that I was reading a book I really wanted something that was just going to be like light and fun and like they were stressing me out so much that they were going to get caught and I just wanted to be like guys just stop having sex in public places like this is very unnecessary um but yeah so I did still enjoy this one. I enjoyed the characters. I liked them together and I had a really fun time with it. I gave it 3.5 stars. So the next book that I read was another nonfiction, which was White Rage, The Unspoken Truth of Our Racial Divide by Carol Anderson. This is the other book that I was reading as part of the Blackout Buddy Read. Um, and this one is specifically about the history of racism from the Civil War to Obama's election. Um, and this book covers so much history, it covers so much time so quickly, and it is very specifically focusing on the history of racism and white supremacy. Of course, I was at least somewhat familiar with many of the events in this book because of my own general education, but this was kind of taking a different perspective on it, um, which was really interesting. And one of the things that I especially appreciated about this was that it focused on like the long-term effects of different laws and policies. Um, Cause I feel like at least in my experience, in my education, very often we would focus on the initial creation or implementation of a law, but not necessarily the long-term effects or the other kinds of laws that are put into place to hinder or like pull back on those laws. And I think that was a large focus of this book were those long-term effects on black communities. Something else that I thought was especially interesting in this was the section about the education system in the United States um, and how really a lot of what our education system is today is because of like racism and white supremacy. So those were two of the things that especially stuck out to me reading it, but I think that this is one I'm gonna have to go back and reread at some point just because it had so much information and I don't feel like I retained everything, um, but I would really like to be able to retain more of it. So I'm probably going to reread this at some point, but I think that this will be really good background information to have as I read more books about anti-racism. Next I read Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert, which is a, another contemporary adult romance, and this is the second book to Get a Life Chloe Brown, so I was very excited to read this one. It just came out like at the end of June. Um, and this is following Chloe Brown's sister, Danny. And Danny uh, is an academic. I think she's getting her doctorate and she is also teaching. And Danny is not looking for a relationship. And our other main character is Zaf. And he is currently a security guard at the university that Danny works at, but he is also um, an ex-rugby player and also has a business where he uh, teaches boys to play rugby, but also uses it as a way to uh, teach them to, you know, talk about their emotions. So at the beginning of the book, Danny is not looking for a relationship, but Zaf really likes Danny and he is kind of like grumpy and intimidating but he's very much a romantic and he reads romance novels um, but he knows that she doesn't want a relationship and what ends up happening is that there is a fire drill in their building and Danny gets trapped in a elevator and Zaf has to save her and as he carries her out of the building everybody takes pictures of them and they start trending online and the two of them decide that they're going to fake date because 
uh, once they are trending online, Zaf starts getting a lot of attention and his business starts getting attention as well. And so the two of them are fake dating as a way of like promoting his business. And of course, they end up actually falling for each other as well. And this was another just like super cute book. I am really enjoying Talia Hibbert's uh, romances and I really want to read more from her. There's going to be a third book in this series that is following the other sister and I'm so excited for that. I think it's coming out next year though. Anyways, this was so cute. I, again, really enjoyed the main characters. Danny is just like a really confident person and really just gonna be who she is. And I like that about her. And I really enjoyed Zaf and that he is this kind of like grumpy, intimidating guy, but is really like a softy. Um, and he is also dealing with anxiety and the two of them are just so cute together. I know that a lot of people seem to like Danny Brown more than Chloe Brown. Personally, Get A Life Chloe Brown is still my favorite of the two, but I also, my lights just flickered. There goes thunder. Okay. <laughs> Um, but I still, I don't remember what I was saying. So Chloe Brown is still my favorite, but I really enjoyed it take a hint, Danny Brown, and I gave this one four stars. Next, I read another nonfiction book, which was Gathering Moss, A Natural and Cultural History of Mosses by Robin Wall Kimmerer. And this is about moss. I really enjoyed the author's enthusiasm for moss. I do feel like I definitely learned a lot about moss from this book. Um, I also liked that the author kind of uh, she tells a lot of stories from her life. She kind of weaves in some of her own philosophy about life, about nature, into this information about moss. I did feel like it spent a lot of time on moss reproduction, but you know, it depends on how interested you are in moss reproduction. I have discovered that I have a limit to my interest in that. Um, but my main takeaway from this book, the thing that I feel like I learned, was that dried moss is very absorbent and that people used to use it to absorb blood from like wounds and things, uh, which I thought was really interesting because I have read a lot of fantasy books where people get wounded and then they like stick moss on it as a way to absorb blood. And I always wondered if that was like an accurate thing, if that was like a thing you would actually do. And apparently it is, but you would have to use dried moss because the point is it's like a dry sponge and it would absorb the liquid. And I feel like a lot of times in books they use hydrated moss, which wouldn't really do anything other than feel fuzzy. Uh, but yeah, so that was my main takeaway from the book is that fantasy books that use moss to absorb blood are actually accurate. Then I read Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey. This is a novella that is kind of a Western, like a Wild West inspired sci-fi. So it takes place in a future in which our society has kind of regressed back to the Wild West. And we are following a group of librarians and in this version of the world, librarians travel across the country and distribute government approved uh, ma reading materials to people. But it turns out, we learn that they also, they distribute uh, some non-approved reading materials as well, and they also sometimes smuggle people um, to safe places across the country. And there are a lot of queer relationships in this book. There is a character that I believe is non-binary, although I don't think they actually use that term specifically. Um, and I really enjoyed this. It was one that I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it because I don't think of like, westerns or like wild west as a setting that i'm very interested in uh so i wasn't sure what i was gonna think of this but i ended up enjoying it i liked learning about these characters kind of what the role is of librarians in this world and the way that they kind of subvert or use that role uh, for their own needs um, and i had a really fun time reading this so i gave it 3.5 stars and then the one physical book that I read this month was The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is a very popular adult uh, science fiction that is soft sci-fi. And this is following the crew of a ship called the Wayfarer um, as they go to different planets and experience different communities and learn about different aliens in this world. And so there is a lot in this about different alien races, different cultures, and 
learning about different cultures and being able to live with people who have different cultures and different values from you um, because also the cast of characters that live on this ship are mostly aliens there were only a couple of humans and i enjoyed this but not as much as i was expecting to because this is another one that i've heard so much hype for and what I've always heard is that it's so character focused and you just love the characters in this which is why I was interested in it because I love character focused stories and while I can see why people love this and why people love these characters it didn't quite work for me I personally felt like it actually focused more on learning about this world learning about the different alien races and having this conversation about culture more than it focused on the individual characters. I felt like I didn't really get enough time with each of these characters. There were a few characters that I really liked, but this book also had little to no plot, and I'm not a plot-driven reader, but I do like my books to have at least a little bit of plot. I also think that if I had been more invested in the characters, then the lack of plot would not have bothered me as much. There were a few good parts that I really enjoyed towards the end. I think pretty much all of the good parts and all of the little bit of plot that it had were pretty much in the last like quarter of the book. So I gave this one three stars because I felt very lukewarm about it, but even so I kind of want to read the second book. So there is something about it that intrigues me and makes me want to try the second book. So that is all for my June wrap up. If you've read any of these books, please talk to me about it in the comments. Thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!